Right, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the SIMD diagrams. So, let's dive straight into it. Why do we use the SIMD diagrams and what exactly are they? Okay, so, uh, they used to instruct one on how to put things together. Examples would be Lego instructions or flat pack furniture instructions. All right. Each step in the instructions are given with pictures showing what one should do next. That means that there aren't normally words or any other instructions included in it. All right. That makes it easy for you to be able to use these instructions even if they're in a foreign language um, or anyone should even if they can't read, should be able to use them. The parts are usually listed with letters and numbers, given the quantity of each part supplied. That just makes sure that when you open the packaging, before you start assembling whatever you are going to assemble using this diagram or these instructions, you can check that you have all of the parts and that you know which parts are being referred to by what letters, etc. Okay, so... Let's just take a look at two examples involving some Lego. So the first one here is a little Lego car. You'll see that there are two options on how to build the car. On the left hand side it gives you a normal little car with the, uh, you know, sort of normal driving instructions. Right, and then the other one labeled one to six is a little race car that you could make. Interestingly enough, the instructions on the left hand side were used in a past paper a couple of years ago where the examiner asked to have the order of instructions put in the right order they gave them all mixed up all right another one is this little airplane construction all right where it's giving the instructions on how to put the pieces together to make a little airplane you can see from the little picture at the top there's also two other options of making the little airplane with the wings in a different position or a little helicopter okay they would also have been probably included in this whole thing. Okay, now looking at an example that involves some flat pack furniture. Miss Jones bought a desk from a Chinese supplier and the instructions were all in Chinese. Thankfully, there was an assembly diagram provided. So you can see all the parts are shown there with different numbers on them. All right. And then a diagram underneath of how you're expected to put them all together. You kind of guess how you're supposed to put them in the right order. Okay, so a couple of questions on this. Which parts form the top and bottom of the desk? Which parts of the desk is labeled part A, or oh, sorry, part three? How many parts make up the drawer? And which parts are these? How many individual parts are supplied? Justify your answer. So let's take a look at this thing again. They want us to find which parts form the top and bottom of the desk. So if I look at the second picture there, you can see that the top part has a little four arrow to, towards it, and the bottom part is a number two. So we can say part four is the top of the desk, part two is the bottom of the desk. B, which part of the desk is part three? Well, taking a look at the shapes there, okay, you can't see part three really described there, although if you look at the bottom, diagram again, you'll see a whole bunch of Chinese writing with a three in the middle, which tells you that three forms the back panel of the desk. How many parts make up the drawer and which parts are these? Well, looking here again, the drawer, we can assume, would be the parts of uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten, all right? Because the other parts are all involved in making the main body of this whole thing. So there are five parts, parts seven, eight, nine, and ten. Even though I've only listed four parts there, there are five because number seven is actually doubled up. Okay. Lastly, how many individual parts are supplied? And justify your answer. So we can see that there are parts labeled one through to ten. Although parts one and part seven are duplicated, which means that there are 12 individual parts because parts 1 and 10 are duplicated. All right, parts 1 and 7 are duplicated, sorry. So that gives you an extra two parts. So in total, there are 12 parts. So assembly diagrams, rather straightforward things here. They really just give you instructions without using words, using pictures and other sort of diagrams 
to indicate how you're supposed to put something together. Okay, hopefully that's helpful and keep safe.